Hi there. Um, thanks for having me. So I'm here to talk about an interactive installation that we made for Apex Twins Collapse EP. Um, it was a, a launch event essentially to draw attention to the fact that he had a new album coming up. Um, but firstly, I think I need to sort of clarify a few things. Who I am. I get a lot of these questions. Why well, have I got three websites? What are the different names? So essentially, I work under all these names. Um, Pixels and Noise is me as an independent freelancer. Stout Studio is a company I run with Pod Bloomin. And LKW is a, a kind of an older brand from basically it's my initials, but I used to direct music videos and stuff. Um, so Pixels and Noise as an independent. Um, I freelance for a lot of different studios. I'm just going to roll through some projects that I've done. Um, one of the first projects I did with D3 and any type of media server was at UVA, working on Massive Attack. I basically did one day training for Disguise and then blagged my way into UVA. And that's how it all started, this story of getting into Notch and everything. Um, I then went on to work with um, some friends of mine, Chris and Chris at TEM. We went and did um, a big hologram for Beyonce in New York, for, which is quite an experience, to be honest. Um, I've also worked with Bill Studios, who you would have heard talking yesterday. This was um, a project we did for MTV Awards with four live Kinect cameras. Um, unfortunately, it never saw daylight because it was something that just kind of didn't work at the end of the day and got cut last minute. Um, I've also done a lot of installations with um, Marshmallow Laser Feast. This was a uh, installation we did in Dubai, which was a massive um, live data visualization of a city. Um, I've done various smaller events. This was with Unit 9. I think this is probably on the Notch website, so you've seen this. It's just some very simple, quick turnaround, and we used Notch to implement the animations. Uh, we've also worked with JT, at, um, Silent Partner. This was um, for Calvin Harris and Julia Lipa and the Graham Norton show. And they allowed us to take over their broadcast feed and do some iMag effects, which was kind of crazy for a British TV channel. Um, more recently, I've been working um, on Sean Mendes' world tour. This was um, just a snap from last year, and I'll be going back out on tour this year to do it again. Um, I've also, with Build Studios, just completed Snow Patrol's new tour. Um, there's a little bit of iMag in this at the top. It was tracked into this music video that they had already had made, so the footage actually moved with the, the, the back plane. So Stout Studio, we do a little bit more um, kind of larger projects and sort of more commercial stuff. Um, I've done the BAFTA Awards with Pod about four years in a row now. This was an example of when we actually used Notch to render this 3D um, environmental mapping. So from one perspective, it all lined up, but then as you got up the stairs, it just became like a sculptural kind of piece that was very abstract. Um, we've done, this is the MTV Unplugged for Placebo's 20th anniversary, and we did a big projection mapping, three, 360 kind of experience. It was kind of cool. Um, this was a very interesting Notch project that we did. Um, it was essentially taking Doppler radar systems and just rendering it to screen as text. Very simple project, but a very nice implementation of Notch. Um, more recently, we just did a, um, a projection mapping job for Tiffany's and Co. And then this is another example of an interactive dance performance that we've done for Swatch. So back to what I'm actually meant to be talking about. Um, so this project that we did for Apex Twin was kind of a guerrilla style installation. We ran it out of the back of two different vans and drove around London. And part of the problem of doing that is how do you build a robust system that you can trust that's going to work when you turn up and you've only got like five minutes to set it up, plug it in, and you've got, you know, so many things can go wrong, and most people here that know if they load into a show, it's not a five-minute job to get your system up and running. Um, so I'm just going to kind of explain how, how we went about it and what we learned and things like that. Um, essentially, the interaction was this plinth, which has got a Leap Motion housed in it, and by waving your hand in front of it, you can control the visuals and also the sounds. So the, the brief was relatively simple. Um, like, I, these started popping up around London. This one was in London, this one was LA, and I think this one was Lisbon. And when I first saw them straight away, I just, I kind of considered that, you know, it'd be great to do a projection of these things and also see them moving. Um, 
<laughs> this thing rendering over the top is a uh, kind of like a little interaction that um, we ended up doing to try and bring it back to the brand. But it also explains what this is from um, Weirdcore's point of view. So it will it'll just speed up and you won't be able to read it soon. <laughs> So there's a lot of things going on here. We, we built the system based around Notch as a real-time renderer. Um, we have Maximus P as an um, audio engine. And there's a lot of DMX and OSC being sent around. Um, so how do you sell this to clients? So the first problem was is like we've done stuff like this before. We actually built this plinth for an, an installation that we made. And um, we needed to kind of prove that we could do this. You know, like how, how can we make this collapse logo actually move? Um, so I, and, you know, within like half a day or so, I came up with this very simple render, and this is what we sent to the client. Um, it is literally just like trying to prove that we can do an interaction, and you can, well, I mean, essentially fist the logo there, which is kind of weird. <laughs> um, but then, like, we heard nothing back for like quite a while. Um, it just sort of went silent, and just kept asking and asking, and then I think within about. Two weeks, just I almost thought like the job was never going to happen. And then suddenly it happened, and they're like, all right, we need to do it in like six days' time. Can you get it done? And it's like, oh, shit, OK. Um, so we just sort of swung into gear. I mean, we'd already built a system similar to this for another installation, but this is the schematic for the show. And the very first sort of, well, yes, the very first iteration of it, there's a lot going on. So essentially, in the plinth on the left-hand side, there's a leap motion at the top. It talks to a nook, which is a small little PC. That PC sends out um, a signal. that is running two bits of software on there. One is um, looking at the leap motion SDK and sending out um, OSC over the network. Um, the other one um, currently in there is a Max patch that looks at um, the same SDK and then sends out DMX, which goes back up to an LED light system at the top, which gives you instant feedback. So as you put your hand over, you get a sort of a gratification. You know it's tracking you. Um, all that was then networked into uh, a disguised GX1. Um, we had a few other things that we needed to do as well. So there was a, uh, a Mac in line that was just sniffing the OSC data because um, Nikki from Weirdcore liked the idea of actually seeing the streams of data that were coming through from the OSC. Um, so that was just like a video capture going in. Um, then that was all being sent out into the audio system, which was running on another Mac. And that had a, quite a complicated Max patch, which was talking to the leap motion, which then created sound and then went out to the PA system. And then the disguise fed out to one um, 30K projector. So as you can imagine, that in the back of a van, setting it up in like 30 minutes is going to be quite a problem. Um, so we started getting building. This is um, just part of the Max patch to do the audio. Um, it's like you just get lost for days in this, but we had six days to build it. Um, here's an example of what the audio. Oh, I'm actually plugged in with audio. No, I'm not. But you can hear it off my laptop. Um, so essentially, we were just programming it here, playing with the, the leap, trying to, and then you can see in the background some of the programs we're using. There's a program called Gecko, which I use to, to talk to the leap and send OSC. And essentially, it sees all the different movements and angles of your hand, and you can um, kind of program it, essentially, and make a patch for what you need it to do. So we made this system quite dumb in the end. We, even though currently this will see left hand, right hand, we actually just decided, it, as soon as it tracks a hand, we're going to just send data. Um, but as soon as we started doing that, realized we um, got a few problems. First problem was D3 wasn't happy. Um, I was using the wrong port, and I was binding way too many ports the same way OSC. So then we ended up in this very structured world where everything had to be listed and everything had to be controlled. It's like very organized. And, you know, and this is one of the main problems with doing any project like this. UDP packets going around, OSC, DMX, it gets really complicated really quickly. And you've just got to know what you're doing with your broadcasting and various other, just getting your IP addresses right. I think the main problem here we came across was binding the right socket to OSC because it just didn't play well on anything other than those numbers. <laughs> um, inside this little system here, there's quite a lot of technology. So, Housed in there at the top is a um, DMX addresser, then there's a NUC, 
And then coming back down, we've got a little power supply, a network adapter, another power supply, and then a, a little DMX adapter as well. So internally, there's an arc net isolated from anything else, and then it just sends out um, another network signal. We then built um, two systems, because we were going to have to do this at six locations in one night, so that meant we had two vans going out, um, two independent systems, and I had to build them in tandem, which meant everything you've solved, you had to do twice. Every problem you had, you had twice. And then there were other problems, like having two systems cross-pollinating, um, because we were just running it on the studio network at one point, and then we had to isolate it. And these were all just things that, you know, like actually even running out of kit, like if you got enough equipment, we ended up with four computers in each system. Um, so then we, we got to a point where we actually had something working, and um, I don't know if you know, but Weirdcore, um, Nikki, is the art director for um, Aphex Twin and has done pretty much all of his visuals for the last seven years. Um, I worked quite closely with him for the next part of this project to create essentially what he wanted to do with this now. We built the system, he wanted to have some visuals. So he, he turned up like this kind of weird scientist with these things and um, I was like, what do I do with these? Like he analyzed the music and didn't really know what to think of it. I was, this is like the whole track. Um, but we started quickly to learn that there's a bit of a language to this and um, I can manipulate this in real time. Um, I can use it as luma mats, so I can use it as textures. I mean, this is one that actually ended up in the piece that we projected. And it, it, it had a color mat and it also had a luma mat. And both of these were generated from the actual music video that he created for FX Twin. So we just took the original assets and moved them over to Notch. So I'll just skip through because there's some other cool effects towards the end. So this would have came just, it like pushed polygons out and came like a step effect. And then you might recognize some of this stuff from the music video. This was a layer that actually exists in the video. And then I'll just skip through to the end. There's quite a lot of these. And then this actually is a depth map that we used that he had supplied and it basically comes straight from uh, the Collapse EP music video. So there's a section of the video where the, you see the top of the Elephant and Castle um, like power station and his logo is just like manipulating the top of the building. And this is the actual map that's in that. So we just took the map and put it straight into Notch and we could have it running in real time. Um, but then he did start giving me assets. So this is the, the actual uh, top of that building I was saying in the music video and it, it just didn't work because he triangulated it and the points weren't matching up and when I rendered it in real time, I could actually see every individual step. It wasn't like a smooth surface. So we ended up having to do a lot of optimization on some of the 3D assets. But I mean, it's just something once you get into that pipeline, it's an easy thing to do. You just need to know what you're doing with it. Um, so then we started building. So that's actually that object now in real time, being manipulated, started texturing things. This is some of the OSC data that was getting a little bit complex because Nikki wanted to hide like messages in it, which is great, but then if you forget what the X, Z, Y, or whatever the your was, you have to remember all of these strings, and it started getting very complicated. Um, at this point, we then needed to sort of like prove to the client that we could do it again, so we had to go out and do location hunting and scout some places, and we ended up doing these kind of like decks where we just presented what it might look like if it's projected onto a wall. We found these various spots around town. This was in Sutton Walk. And typically when we turned up to this, of this spot, when it was actually on the night of doing it, there was a van parked in front and we couldn't project there. So we had to find somewhere else. This was another location that actually worked out quite well, but as soon as our team turned up there, they were like cordoned off by the box park security, which are like fake police, and they were trying to move them on. But it's still a very good location to do it. Um, optimizing textures, obviously this is currently in disguise and George is a classic kind of example of just sending something to the notch block and coming back. So we were basically timelining all of our textures and stuff in, in disguise. Um, this is now more optimization, actually getting content in, which was, these are all the various textures from the original brief. So there's the, the LA bush, there's the uh, Turin like, uh, wall, 
and also the tube wall as well from London. Um, and then we timelined the whole show. So at some point or other, we just needed to have quite a structure to it so that if you have an experience on this, you essentially run out of time and then someone else can have a go. Because otherwise, it's just an endless kind of loop. You can just play with it. Um, this is just uh, some of the early tests of our sound engine and some of the, the final visuals before we went out and projected it. So we ended up doing a lot of feedback in field effectors and um, trying to work out how to manipulate cloners and things. And essentially everything was just controlled by your hand. You just waved it around and it would do various things. Um, so this audio engine that we originally built was based on some samples that Apex Twin gave us, but the mu record company weren't really happy with it. They said it didn't sound like his music and it wasn't, it wasn't on brand, essentially. See, that's some of the errors you could see in that render there before I optimized it. So we then had to make changes. They changed the goalposts on us, and one day before we were meant to deploy this, we had to reinvent our whole sound engine and use Apex Twin's music. So this is a version of it, just looping his music, and we'd essentially pitch bend it, speeded it up. We kind of, you know, just glitched around with an actual loop of audio. So this is the music we actually ended up doing the presentation with. But it was very different. After like three days of building an audio engine that was based on samples and like um, instruments, so then we just had a, a sine wave that essentially we were just moving around. So then hours to go. Um, this is pretty much the only uh, prep work that anyone did is just put this out on Instagram. <laughs> Doesn't explain much. Um, we were going to go to all these locations. These are the ones we discussed. I wasn't sure if anyone was going to turn up, but they did. And too many turned up. I don't think even half those people realized that there was a plinth there and they could play with it. But we had a PA system out the back of a van and we're making a lot of noise and we cordoned off a road in Waterloo at this location. Uh, but then in the back of the van, my monitor broke. So I had to operate the whole show like this. So that was a lesson learned, take two monitors or take a flight case with it. So I actually just had to kind of busk the whole show guessing what was going on. But luckily, because I programmed it, I kind of knew where things were. <laughs> um, so this is a little behind the scenes video of, um, that we made just to sort of sum up what the event was about. And um, I'll just play this before I show you some of the project files. Okay, so I'm going to switch over to um, my other machine. So this um, is essentially the asset that we got from Nikki straight in to Notch. What I had to do essentially was carefully UV it so that we could do particular things. He had this idea that when the logo collapses, that it drags the pixels with it. So every 
side surface of this object had essentially to strip the pixels down. So as it steps down, it, it, it will drag the next pixel with it. Um, so if I just play this, I should be able to manipulate it. This probably won't work. There you go. So as you can see there, it's dragging all the pixels down. And this is one of the key things from the client, is just to make this look, because this is essentially the album cover. Um, there's no audio actually happening, so I haven't got the audio engine in line. But this is the this most simple part of the project. Essentially, you just collapse the logo, and you can manipulate it. But we built a diff few different looks. Um, I mean, this was quite a basic one, but I'll just quickly show you the problem here. Um, if you had MoGraph, you would just put this in a cloner and just manipulate it. But we didn't really know how to do that in Notch at the time, and we kind of struggled. So everything in this line here is kind of delayed. So there's one signal of OSC coming in, which is a, a Z plane, and it gets sent down and then delayed various times into each of those objects. So that was kind of like a, an interesting problem to solve. Um, if I can get this timeline. Okay, so I'm not used to such a small GUI. This is um, one of the more uh, kind of trippy moments in, in the piece. It was essentially quite a simple system, but it has a lot more OSC commands going in. So we actually took like rotation, movement of your hand, up and down, left and right, um, and then just put it into a field system. So if I manipulate this one, you should be able to see it, if I can remember how to use it as well. So if I turn my hand left or right, I can actually push it one direction or the other go forwards, it actually then starts to pixelate into other logos. And essentially this was the interaction. So you could play with this and you could find moments within it where you could do various different things. So just turning my hand, it will go out and then go in. So at the cusp of it, this was the show. Um, we just literated through various different effects and some of those Luma mats that I um, showed you earlier ended up being um, used as well. So I don't know if I've got one here. Yeah, this is a good example. So this is the bump map from the music video just being rendered in real time. And then we essentially just projected this out onto a wall and it gave the illusion of the, the logo pushing into the wall. A very simple lighting system on it. But it, this was the real key for me is just being able to take assets that the client had already made from cinema for his music video and without much effort put it into something else. So we didn't have to like reformat any of this, we just transcoded it to HAP so it could run from a server. And that's pretty much it. I will let people come and play with the box if they want to have a look at it. And um, thank you for having me. Thank you very much, Liz. Right.